Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. And boxing, find a way to win, or you find a way to lose. Let me tell y'all something. This whole misfit boxing on the zone and everybody thinking this is all a bunch of cartoonish antics and guys over here not making any money. Let me let me let me let me, let me tell y'all something, man. Y'all would really need to understand what the hell is going on over there with this misfits boxing. Hey, these guys, these guys are making some serious dough. Serious, serious money. Now, you, you, when you look and you see a guy like Tyson Fury deciding that he wants to do these crossover bouts, um, you know, you can't really blame him. When you see his brother Tommy Fury only boxing in this misfit boxing league now, and because, I guess he kind of comes from that little cult. But you wonder what happened to him wanting to go out here and become this, this, this champion in boxing. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what's going on. And I'm going to tell you what happened. He got over there and he started getting that misfit money. Let me tell you something. All these guys that we sit here watching... For those of you who watch it like me, the damn low, the damn uh, salt poppies, the swarms, you know, these different guys who are fighting over there, let me tell you something. Them guys are making from like, from like 500,000 to three, four million a fight. That is crazy because they're selling out uh, arenas um, and this whole thing that's coming up with the pay-per-view, let me tell you, this Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis stuff, that's the best thing that could have ever happened to this event. For just to give y'all an idea, Logan Paul and KSI, they had two fights. And them guys were making them about a million, a little bit more apiece. And the, 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 the first fight did another million or so or more in the second fight. Now, they're not disclosing what KSI versus Tommy Fury, you know, they're not disclosing those fight purses. But it's going to be some serious money. And for Logan Paul and Dylan Danis, again, it's going to be some serious money. Matter of fact, when you take a look, at, when you look at these guys and the kind of money that they're making, I'll put it to you this way. They're making so much money, you know, from boxing, and everything else that they're doing, right? That now, the Forbes list has started a new ranking for the global financial news outlet called Top Creators. Now, this Top Creators list looks to highlight entrepreneurs who do the bulk of their business on various social media and podcasting platforms. Now, that means KSI, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, all these guys who are involved with this content creating and whatever they're doing to make money, right? Well, check it out. They have their own top 10. Now, in that top 10, you have this guy, Mr. Beast. Now, if y'all don't know who Mr. Beast is, then you must not have kids. Because this guy has 312 million followers and he makes about 82 million a year. And KSI makes about $24 million a year. Jake Paul makes about $34 million a year. His brother Logan Paul makes about, right now, $21 million a year. Let me tell you all something. That's a lot of dough. But you know why you're going to see boxers getting mixed up with this misfits boxing and, and going over there? I'm talking about real boxers. Like, you may see Keith Thurman float over there. Let me tell you, it just takes one of these guys to call him out. Why do you think everybody want to fight Jake Paul? Why do you think everybody want to fight Jake Paul? Because Jake Paul out here making 20-something million a fight. But this is the catch that y'all need to understand. You know why this misfit money is the next best thing to Saudi? Because when these guys are fighting, they're not paying no manager. They're not paying no advisor. They're not paying all these different fees. They're not got no goddamn sanctioning bodies in there taking a piece of their money. For the most part, the money they're making, 
majority of it goes in their own pocket. These guys are making dough, and the females who are fighting. So we can sit here and this looking like some Three Stooges type of uh, event. They got this down to a science. They came out here and basically gave the middle finger to the WBA, WBC, WBO, and IBF. And with the kind of money these events are putting on, if they can get more of these crossover bouts, big name professional fighters, to come over to the platform and fight a big name content creator who just so happened to take up boxing, you could see uh, at some point the sanctioning bodies try to find a way to get their hands on some of that misfit money. And you're going to see more fighters gravitating that way. Because look, these guys, a lot of these professional fighters can't get fights. They ain't making no real money, man. And what, whatever they do get paid, they got to split it. Look at what Frank Martin was talking about. He was going to get paid a million dollars to fight Shakir Stevenson. And then, uh, you know, he figured about half of that is gone for taxes. Then what it taxes in the promoter. Then he was looking at what was left for him, like five hundred thousand, to to still be split up a little different ways. Manager, cut man, everything. You know, that's horrible. You get a, you hear, we hear a million dollars, and people get excited for the fighter. When you look at what at the end of the day, what he gets left with, it's like damn two hundred fifty thousand, something crazy. When you go over to Misfit Boxing, you don't have that problem. They're getting paid. And that's why, you know, whether people want to believe it or not, I just think you're going to find more professional boxers getting further and further away from really having a desire to be a world champion. I mean, hey, go fight for a title, make $10 million, give 3% to 3% of that to a sanctioned body, give about 23, 25, 30 percent of that to taxes. Give another piece of that to your promoter. You can take the rest and break it up across all the guys who helped you in your camp. Then what you have left with, okay, it's not a lot of money compared to that lump, that 10 million you were getting. Come over here to Misfit Boxing and they pay you 10 million. See just how much you got to give to people and how much you keep in your pocket for a non title fight. But to basically go out there and, you know, put on a spectacle, they will do it. Because they'll make more in that one fight than they would make fighting probably their whole career. Or fighting ten fights. Y'all think I'm joking. Go on out there and take a look. They got these people out here making, man, like 10, 17, 20, 80. These people making $100 million in a year. It's crazy. And this fighting thing has done nothing but find another way for these guys to create uh, an income stream. And, and, and they're all over it. That's why you see so many of them training and trying to get you know, trying to get better at the sport of boxing. They're creating their own little world. Big John Fury went on record. He already said, hey, look, my boys are going where the money is. There's more money in this crossover boxing, misfits boxing, this weird social media world because you don't have to pay all these different people than there is in conventional boxing. So why mess around with conventional boxing when you can come over here and make 10 times that in one fight? And, and Big John Fury, I don't agree with a lot of stuff he says, but hey, the, the old man has a point. So that being said, man, let's see how this plays out, especially if this pay-per-view event they have coming up, if that blows up, I'm telling you, these other fighters are going to be trying to find a way to get in there. And I, I tell you what, this salt poppy guy, he can fight. Um, and then, of course, the KSI, the Logan Paul, the Jake Paul, those guys have big names, big profiles. And uh, the big money fights, especially if they take on a big name from boxing. I mean, you're talking huge money. You're talking about like a, a Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather type deal. You know what I'm saying? Like real pay-per-view sales, real money. Don't be surprised if you see it happen. And, and, and some people in boxing may be sour and disappointed when they say when they see who decides to go over there and have a crossover fight with one of these damn YouTubers now. 
It's not even about the MMA guys anymore. It's, it's now including the damn social media world. These guys from this damn social media world. And you know what? I think everybody should do it. Because if the sanctioning body is going to keep taking money, if, if these damn um, different platforms aren't going to put up enough fights and these promoters aren't going to put up enough fights for their guys, let them go somewhere else and get some easy money. Hell, look at what Francis Ngannou did. You know what I'm saying? That's what I call a win. But anyway, y'all keep cool. If they can't get the Saudi Arabia to get that Saudi money, yo, go to Misfit Boxing. Get that Misfit money. Because that's the next best thing to Saudi. And you ain't got to deal with them sanctioning bodies. Keep most of that money for yourself. That being said, y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze. <laughs>